Hi, and welcome back to my workbench. What I'm doing today is converting a Sensational Pro 3060 LED lamp for typically nail drying of UV resins over to a UV curing station for the 3D printer. It actually came out really well. I'm happy with the build. Added a grate on the top and a fan beneath that so it'll cool off. Changed it to always on by adding the uh, by modifying the switch so that it just goes directly to powering the device. Also added a tray and a front plate for it, which seemed to work rather well. As always, if you enjoy the video, please subscribe down below. If you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to add them in the comments section. And you can always find the full write-up up on over at PC Burn. This is a UV curing station. What I'm going to be using it for is curing the objects from the 3D printer, the resin printer that I got in and have been working on lately, that I'll be showing in future videos. But what I needed first was a UV curing station with some sort of tray on it so I could actually do the work and cure the stuff afterwards. Also, I wanted the curing station to have a cover so it wouldn't, uh, you know, wind me as it was in operation. So that's what I created. This used to be a nail LED lamp salon, you know, home salon sort of thing. But what I've done is attached a fan on the top. I've routed the power around so that it's always on when you turn it on the switch. And I've actually created a grill for it. Well, two grills. I think what I'm going to do is use the thinner one, but we'll see which one works out better when I take it apart. Also, this was kind of interesting. It had a 555 timer doing the controls, two of them doing the controls before, which would just automatically shut off after a set amount of time from the circuit there. And I routed the power around that because it doesn't really make any sense for the application. What I found after that was that the circuit board was overheating a little bit because it was only made for a limited run time on it rather than uh, always on, which is what I had switched it to. So I'll take this apart again, show you what the modifications I made are, and put the fan grill on and then show you the parts that I've made for it so that it'll work okay. And these will be available over on Thingiverse, GitHub, the usual places. Uh, probably Prusa, although not in their weird G-code format. And I'll go through over quickly how I designed this and what I came up with it. All right, let me get this part. I'll show you the inside quick. We'll do a teardown on the new design. And then we can actually take a look at it in operation. Although I don't have any curing stuff for it, that doesn't really matter. I'm sure you're familiar with the idea of putting the liquidy resin under it and then curing it for some amount of minutes. It does work rather well for that. I did try it a few times just to make sure that the UV light worked okay after I modified the power state of it. All right, let's get started. So there's our quick and dirty modifications for this board, uh, basically. The power has just been routed over to the switch directly so that it's no longer going through all this excess circuitry. Uh, these were a bunch of 555 timers that controlled all of these LED on the board. Let's switch back for a second and I'll show you the 555 timers on the other side. All right, so I figured out where the circuitry should be shunted to go bypass the uh, switch entirely so the 555 timers are, aren't getting used and none of the control circuitry that handles timing on this is going to be used anymore. And it should just turn on when I hit the power button with it shunted there. This would be different on every circuit board, but what I did was just find out where these go through and then just hooked in the power directly over there after it. So now when I turn on the power, it should and it does turn on the UV LEDs instead of waiting for the switch to be pressed. And just to confirm that, I'm going to check the power across one of the LEDs to make sure that it's a reasonable voltage. And it is. 3.45 is probably just fine. So that's all it's getting across the UV LED. And I found the correct point. It's going over the resistors correctly, so it's getting dropped appropriately for the LEDs and then it's just making a power circuit instead of relying on those 555 timers and the kind of 
analog circuitry they put on here to control timing on this. That would probably all be handled by an AVR or some other microcontroller, just a pick or whatever these days, or, you know, a custom programmed one-time chip. And now you've had a chance to take a look at that. So the other modification is I've powered the fan directly off the circuit board. It's running at its native voltage, 12 volts, because the circuit board's a 12 volt circuit board. And the fan itself is just routed through a hole in the top. I did a rough cut on this and then just chamfered it off a little bit. I wasn't really looking to do too fine a job on that because it's gonna get covered up. I'd originally intended to make a slip cover that just covered the entire top or maybe replace the entire thing, but that seemed a bit ambitious. And uh, the, the plastic printout on this would be a little odd because it would need supports for either the top or, if I print it this way, the side. So I didn't really end up wanting to do that. I, I could have, I suppose, just used a flat side on either the front or the back and angled it like that, but it, it ended up being a lot more work than I wanted to do on the project. So now what I'm going to do is just take the fan off quick and mount up our custom slats for it so that light goes backwards when it's on rather than forwards towards the person standing in front of it. Don't want any of the UV light uh, hitting your eyes. Just in general that's a bad idea and in this case particularly bad idea because this UV is probably running at about four or five nanometers and your eyes don't have much of a natural defense against that. It just uh, bakes them for lack of a better explanation. Simpler explanation, rather. Anytime you're working with any kind of UV, you want to have the proper safety equipment on, which would usually be a completely UV reflective glass for whatever band you're working in. It's very important. It'll save your eyesight, and those glasses don't cost much relative to whatever you're working on, so it's an important safety measure. So, as you can see, this was just a quick, dirty cutout for the application. I didn't really want it to be fancy. What I'm going to do is use this angled fin fan. There are 45 degree angles on the fins, and it'll just angle everything away from the viewer with the light. This plastic may degrade a little faster than normal just because the um, UV will cook the PLA. I'm guessing it's not going to be too bad because it's all colored. The color should actually provide something of a barrier. If you want it to make it last longer, what you could do is paint it in some reflective color, probably a black or metallic, or rather white or a metallic coat of paint would probably do a good job. The way I made these cutouts was just to use the fan as the template and use a marker to poke some color holes through the fan screw slots so that I'd know where to make the cuts. It doesn't always give you the exact best results, I probably should have done a quick template on paper and then used that to do the, the actual cuts. It would give me a little more exact uh, exact positioning on it. If I had used some chalk or something on a piece of paper and done a quick outline of the fan and then taped that down on the surface and then used that to do my cuts, it probably would have been a little more exact. But I was trying to get this done in a hurry so I could have something to cure a print I just done and for that it actually worked really well. So I'm happy with the results. And now it should actually have some UV protection on there. The other thing I wasn't sure on is which way I'd want the air to blow. I'm assuming I want it to blow outward from the fan, which I believe would be going on this way. Not sure which way would be better to suck in cold air from the outside onto the top of the board or to suck the air in from underneath and provide some some cooling air over it. So apparently on putting it back in I damaged the fan cable. Should have used a more flexible cable for that, but live and learn. And uh, I will now reattach that so it works. Now both the so joints are resoldered. I'm going to strap it down with a bit of Kapton tape to hopefully provide us some strain relief. But not that I'm holding out too much hope on that doing any good, but better than nothing.
There we go. Let's make sure it actually works this time before I put it all back together. Ah, you can see the fan spinning up, and it's all working correctly. Alright, so the other items I've designed for this are a tray and a cover for it. What I started off with was just a tray made out of cardboard to size it up. Also, I'll probably put caps on tape to prevent the sticky residue from getting into the tray and the items from just sticking and bonding with the PLA. I'll do that now. So with this, I just iterated over the design a few times to get it right. It wasn't that easy to get the sizing correct on the tray itself. The LED curing bed has a weird kind of uh, curved on, on two dimensions bed. It curves inward slightly like this, and it also curves outward on the downslope. So I had to make a few iterative designs, which you can see here, starting with a straight design and then figuring on the angling for this one. And then I finally got the correct design here, which fit in perfectly or actually fit in perfectly, but doesn't have quite the lip on the edge, the round out. And then I measured it and designed it again, and this one fits in perfectly. It's also got a b edge here for a tray, and it fits in nicely behind that, so that when you've got it on, now it doesn't bleed out much UV. I'll also be coating the inside of this with paint for resistance, and this will be getting the Kapton tape on top of the print bed. So it should provide a nice tray with, uh, hopefully the Kapton keeps it from sticking. I tried it quick with a bit of resin, seemed to work well, so I've got high hopes for that working out. Not sure what the easiest way to apply this will be, but let's just try this. You could probably use anything which the resin won't stick well to. I just happen to have these large sheets of Kapton for the 3D printers, so that's what I'm using. And it seems to work well. There we go. The cover also took a few iterations to work. I was originally printing out one that fit nicely over the top of it, like that, but unfortunately this takes far too much plastic in the inside to support it, so I didn't like wasting all of that. So I made a few squared ones, redid the measurements, uh, measured from the bottom so that it'll fit the tray under nicely. So now all you have to do is put the tray in with your part, Let's see, let me get some parts that I'll be cured on there. Yeah. So here's some parts that I've already cured with this. As you can see, they look pretty good. Those are a couple different types of resins. One's clear, one's a red tint. The red tint's ancient, so it's, it's kind of mellowing out and not tinting as much as it was. So you take your parts, put them on there when they're wet, cover it like that, and then Turn on the UV cure. And that's it. I'll still have to see if the cooling sufficient is sufficient for the array of lights. It might not be. Might have to upgrade that or replace the lights at some point with something with more heat sinking on them. Since it's just being used as a simple on-off. I don't have to worry about all that circuitry on the board. I could just rip that board out and replace it with strips of LEDs or what have you. Anything along those lines would work well. And uh, as long as it had sufficient cooling so that the fan could do its job, heat sinking on the back, it would probably work possibly even a little better than this. I wasn't too concerned about the amount of UV it's putting out. It seems to be more than sufficient with that array of LEDs. And it does work 
Okay, so if you'd like to make one of these, I've got all the designs for this stuff up on Thingiverse and the GitHub account. I've also got the full work right up over on PC Burn. If you want to leave any messages or you know have any comments on it, like leave. You can also leave them in the comments down below, of course. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe on the channel. I'll have more things like this on 3D printing, some electronics teardowns, some video game system teardowns, along with the electronics on classic systems and some newer newer consoles. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.